الحمد للہ الحمد للہ العلیم الخبیر المتقن نظام العالم بلا معین و نصیر فسبحان اللہ الذی حکمته بالغة و علمه غزیر و نعمه واصلة الى کل صغیر و کبیر و نشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له فی نقیر ولا قطمیر و نشہد ان سیدنا و مولانا محمدا عبده و رسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منير ودعانا إلى الله بالإنذار والتبشير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ما دامت الكواكب تسير أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍّ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ صدق اللہ العظیم Honorable scholars, respected brothers, elders, mothers and sisters As Muslims, we are often reminded of our moral, ethical and religious obligation to fellow humans who are in some difficulty, adversity or tragedy and from time to time there is a call and a campaign, respond, assist, empower. Like someone said it in the Arabic language, Sabruka fi musibatika khayrun min jaz'ik wa jaz'uka fi musibati akhika khayrun min sabrik. It's always better for you to persevere on your own pain and affliction. And it's always better for you to react and assist and not be silent on the pain of others. To a certain extent, the Muslim Ummah continues to rally, assist and support and may Allah bless one and all. But that's not the focus of my talk today. I want to change strides momentarily as we draw towards the final days of the sacred, blessed and momentous month of Ramadan. How often are we reminded and told that it is our duty in an equal way to share in the joy, happiness and prosperity of others. When my brother or my sister has accomplished something, they are in a prosperous situation, then as a Muslim it's my duty to wish well for them, compliment them and congratulate them. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, Inni la asma' bil ghayf. يصيب للمسلمين أرضا فأفرح به وما بي بتلك الأرض من صائمة. I would hear that rain has come on a neighboring town, on a neighboring country. I don't have any family there, nor do I have any flock grazing there. Just to know that rain has come and benefited some humans in some part of the world. For me, it gives me the equal sense of joy as though that rain has benefited me myself. وَإِنِّي لَا أَسْمَعْ لِلْحَاكِمْ مِنْ حُكَّامِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ يَقْضِي بِالْعَدْلِ فَأَفْرَحُ بِهِ وَمَا بِي بِتِلْكَ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ قَضِيَّةِ I would hear about a judge, an advocate who is executing justice. I don't have any case, nothing pending. I don't have any hearing. I have nothing to do with that particular judge or advocate. But just to know there's a good man who's selfless, who's, uh, who's giving value back to the community, brings joy to me, brings happiness to me. And that's the message that I want to conclude as we bid farewell to the sacred month of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ is having a private meeting with Abu Bakr and Umar It's the late hours of the night, the early hours of the morning. As they conclude and they exit, they find Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu engaged in prayer, in nocturnal prayer. Wow! The Prophet of Allah comes from the rear and then he pauses and he extends an attentive ear to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah is engrossed, immersed in his prayer. He says to Abu Bakr and Umar, من سره أن يقرأ القرآن رطبا كما نزل فليقرأ على قراءة ابن أم عبد If you want to read the Quran like how it was revealed to me then follow this man this is the manner in which the Quran ought to be recited Then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud goes on into prayer 
And as he's supplicating, the Prophet of Allah is saying Ameen to his supplication. Abu Bakr and Umar are standing on the wings, green with envy, green with envy. Umar said, in my heart I decided that tomorrow I'm going to go to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and I'm going to share the good news. You were in prayer, you were in supplication, clueless of who was standing behind you, only to know the Prophet of Allah was endorsing your prayer and saying Ameen to it. The gathering concluded, we dispersed, I retired to bed, early morning I rise, I dash to the door of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, I knock on the door. He opens and he ushers me in. I say to him, oh Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, I have good news for you. He says, tell me what's the good news. He said, you recall last night you were performing prayer? I said, absolutely. He said, well, I want to tell you, after your prayer, when you were supplicating and making dua, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying ameen to your dua. I have come to share that good news. I'm happy for you. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, I appreciate your sentiments, but Abu Bakr was here earlier and he conveyed it to me. <laughs> Umar ibn Khattab said, Wallahi ma sabaktu Abu Bakrin qattu ila khayrin illa sabaqani ilayhi. I knew that Abu Bakr had always excelled me. I thought there was a niche for me to tap in here. And that is just to have the cleanliness of heart to share in the joy of others. But lo and behold, Abu Bakr is a legend par excellence. He has excelled on every front. My message is my brother and my sister, find it within yourself to be happy on the accomplishments of others and every day you will be happy in your life. And if you're a person who's depressed by the accomplishments of others, then every day of your life will be an added day of agony and depression. The most telling tale in this regard, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells Zayd radiallahu anhu, who initially he had adopted Zayd radiallahu anhu was adopted by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then his father went looking for him bakaytu ala Zaydin wa lam adri ma fa'al ahayyun fayurja am atadunahu al-ajal fa wallahi ma adri wa inni lasailun aghalaka ba'di as-sahlu am ghalaka al-jabal تذكرني الشمس عند طلوعها وتعرض ذكراه إذا غربها أفل وإن هبت الأرواح هيجن ذكره فيا طول ما حزني عليه ويا وجل the father laments the separation of his son that as long as the sun rises and the birds chirp and the winds blow your separation agonizes me finally he comes to the prophet وسلم, and he says i believe my son is in your care the prophet وسلم, said yes absolutely he said i have come to pay ransom to take him the prophet of allah وسلم, said no no you can have him i will not take a dime in lieu i will not take a cent in lieu but one thing i will not do i will not send zaid against his wishes so his father says, oh, my son Zaid, come, I have come to take you. And his uncle was with, he says, oh, my biological dad, I respect, honor and revere you. You are my father and that is my uncle. But the Prophet of Allah embodies an uncle, brother, friend, associate in every regard. In his personality, I see everyone and everything I need. So he opts to stay with the Prophet ﷺ. Time moves on. The Prophet of Allah sends a proposal. Listen to this very, very attentively. The Prophet ﷺ sends a proposal to his cousin Zainab radiallahu anha. Zainab bint Umayma. Umayma was the aunt of the Prophet ﷺ. His maternal aunt. His paternal aunt. The daughter of Abdul Muttalib, the brother, the sister of Abdullah, the father of the Prophet ﷺ. Zainab radiallahu has a reservation. She says, no, Zaid, I don't think I'm comfortable. Because in the lineage of Zaid, there was a stint, a period of slavery. 
So then she felt it's not compatible. I belong to another class, he belongs to another class. Allah revealed the verse, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It doesn't befit to believe in male and female when Allah and His Prophet pronounce a decree for them to ask for choice, option, negotiation in the matter. When the verses were revealed, she obliged, she acceded, she responded, and the marriage was solemnized. The marriage was solemnized. But, just to expedite it, شَاءَتْ حِكْمَةُ اللَّهِ أَلَّا يَتَوَافَقْ بَيْنَ زَيْدْ وَزَيْنَبْ By the will of Allah, the marriage was just not compatible. It just wasn't developing. There was issues, there was back and forth, there was ups, up and down, it was turbulent. And then Zayd would come to the Prophet ﷺ, myself and Zainab are not getting along. And the Prophet ﷺ said, أمسك عليك زوجك واتق الله وتخفي في نفسك Listen, Zayd, just keep your wife. Just hang on. Don't dissolve. Don't terminate. Don't end. Just make peace. Reconcile. But he realized at some point, it's going to dissolve. Now, in his heart, the Quran says in the 22nd Jews, he concealed an emotion which Allah was going to divulge and Allah was going to reveal. And what was this emotion? And that is, he was going to wed Zainab if Zayd radiallahu divorced her. Because the only way I can mend her heart, rescue her emotions, comfort her self-esteem, empower her, she took the bold step of wedding Zayd against her wishes on my proposal. Lo and behold, it did not materialize. Now to patch and mend her emotions, I will have to wed her. But this is where I bring you to the point of reflection on my topic. The environment out there is toxic, my brother and my sister. We carry too many grudges in our life and we're giving off this negative energy. We need to become light, we need to become relaxed, we need to be happy, we need to empower, we need to be cheerful. The Prophet wasallam sent Zayd, the former spouse of Zainab, he said, go to your ex-wife and go and tell her, I am proposing to her. Wow. Did you get that, my brother? Did you hear that, my sister? Generally, when a marriage breaks up, it's like, well, I want to see if he can get better than me. And I want to see if she can get better than me. You can tour the world, you're not going to get another me. It has ended, it has dissolved. The Prophet ﷺ is sending Zayd that you go back to your spouse and tell her. يذهب إليها بل ويقول لها أبشري يا زينب فإن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يخطبك wow. The practical wisdom incorporated in the prophetic methodology of dispatching Zayd رضي الله عنه to his former spouse is to impress upon us that even if you had a sour ending with someone, that doesn't mean you should stop desiring good for your former spouse. The teachings of Islam are, be selfless, be wholesome, empower and benefit people, even if it means someone with whom you did not have the best of relationship. I came across, we live in a world today where people go for these motivational talks, and then you have the psychology, and then you have this therapy, and then you have this theory, and then they package it together, and it's in a glossy magazine, and it's quite colorful and flamboyant and, you know, conspicuous, and then these are the five things to do, five not to do, anger management, this and that. 
But listen to this amazing, phenomenal reflection in the verse of the Quran. So Allah speaks about the time when the brothers of Yusuf arrive in Egypt. And Yusuf is on the throne of Egypt. He's on the throne and his brothers arrive. He recognizes this is my brothers. Yeah. But they didn't recognize him because he evolved. He was a child when they dropped him in the well. There were so many different milestones as he grew and evolved. And they were in the advanced age of their life. And they couldn't imagine him sitting on the throne. It's a verse of the Quran. Anyway, formality goes on. He speaks to them. They're given some food, some corn, some grain. He then calls the servants of the palace and he says, When you go back and these people leave, the money taken from them, put it back in their saddlebags. Put it back in the saddlebags. That's my blood. Fast forward the whole tale, comes the moment where the bubble bursts and the secret is divulged. And the brothers confess and concede guilt that we are wrong and Allah has honored you. Now I, I, I beg for your undivided attention and I came across this. It's such a profound reflection. I promise you, if you and I can take this lesson of life, it's a formula to make your stay on earth pleasant. So the Prophet Yusuf says, La Listen, my brothers, the 40 years of infliction, systematic oppression, separation, lies, distortion, fabrication, brutality, I have forgiven everything and I will continue praying to Allah to forgive you. The question arises, as much as he was a prophet, he was a human, he was a mortal. How do you muster the courage? What's the psychology? What's the thinking? What's the vision? What's the mechanism? What's the stimulation? I mean, you're a human, you're a mortal, you have emotions. There's so many things you can have, uh, you know, go down memory lane and all these inflictions can evoke nasty memories. How could he master the courage and clear out everything in one slate? And this is what I read in the tafsir, and it's so profound. Oh my word. I, I, I know my time is up and I'm going to conclude on this note. I want you to just absorb and digest this. The theory, the analogy given to explain the vision of the pious, how they can flush out negativity, close the chapter, turn the page, move on, embrace a new page of life and be light and happy, cheerful and not whole and keep any grudge, how they do it. When a servant views the wrong of fellow servants, a human views the wrong of fellow humans with the apparent eye, the physical eye, the tangible eye, then afna ayyamahu fi muhasamatihim. He destroys his whole life in proving his innocence and implicating others. No, no, but I'll never forgive you what you did to me on my wedding day. But that was nasty. That was evil. That was obnoxious. How evil. How could you have ever said such a nasty thing to my son? But that was wicked of you to do this to my sister. So when a person views the happenings around him of fellow humans with the apparent, the outward, the physical eye, his entire life goes in back and forth, up and down, Productive, counterproductive, exonerating himself, implicating others to no avail. Your life ends. Afna ayyamahu fi muhasamatihim. But flip the coin and look at the lenses of the pious. When a servant views the atrocities of other humans to him with the deeper eye and the inner eye. And that is the will of Allah. 
that those around me are nothing more than instruments for the execution of the plan that Allah has decreed for me. Then he can release all negativity in one go because he knows whoever has harmed you as much as that person is a guilty party my Allah has the cloud and the muscle to block him and stop him and if Allah did not stop it then that was the will of Allah in my favor so he rises above he goes beyond he doesn't have a cursory glance he has a deep eye he doesn't have the outward eye he has the inner eye Ala tara ila Yusuf hina alima majra al qada. Don't you marvel at Yusuf when he seen how the plan of faith, destiny, and taqdeer played out? He said, I've got no gripe with you. You dropped me in the well, the caravan picked me up, but ultimately, this is what my Lord has decreed for me. So my chapter with you is done. I have forgiven you and may Allah forgive you. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين والجنة للموحدين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام الأكملان الأتمان على الركن الأعظم أفضل من تقدم ومن تأخر وعلى آله وأصحابه الغر الميامين يا رب اللهم ارحم ضعفاءنا ويسر أمورنا واختم بالباقيات الصالحات أعمالنا رب عجز الطبيب فداونا وفسد الزمان فنجنا وضعفت حيلتنا فقونا إلهي حملت نوحا على ذات ألواح ودسر يا ذا العزة والجبروت وردت ليعقوب بصره وردت ليعقوب بصره بعد ما بيضت عيناه يا ذا الملك والملكوت وجمعت بينه وبين ابنه يوسف قبل أن يموت ونجيت موسى في التابوت وحملت يونس في بطن الحوت ونجيت الحبيب محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم بخيوط العنكبوت سبحانك سبحانك أنت الحي الذي لا يموت أما بعد my concluding remarks as we end the khutbah it's the occasion of Tabuk. The Prophet of Allah had exhorted the companions to spend. Those that were wealthy, they had the economic muscle, they donated in large amounts. And there was a companion by the name of Ulbah radiallahu anhu. He got up by night. He said, Allahumma innaka amartana. Oh my Lord, you've instructed us to donate and spend. Thumma lam taj'al indi ma atakawwa alayh. And then by your will, you haven't given me wealth through which I can spend. And I've come to your Prophet وسلم, and he couldn't provide me with any help or conveyance because of the fact that all resources were depleted and exhausted. And Allah sketches the image in the concluding page of the 10th juz of the Quran. There's no blame on those who come to you and ask you to take them on a conveyance or give them funds and you say you don't have anything. They turn while they tear and sob that they don't have anything to give. He got up that night. He said, oh Allah, I don't have economic wealth or money to give, but I want to make a donation. I don't have a physical, I don't have a tangible, I want to make an invisible, intangible donation. My donation is not money, it's not monetary. My donation is any person who's offended me, violated me or insulted me, or will offend me or violate me, I have forgiven them all unconditionally. And then he went to bed. The next morning when he came to the Prophet of Allah, the Prophet said, Man al bariha. Last night someone gave charity, please make yourself known. So he didn't think that was him. The Prophet said, Man al bariha. Last night who gave charity of his self-esteem? He said, me, O Prophet of Allah. He said, Abshir nafsi biyadihi laqad kutibat fi zakatil mutakabbala. May Allah bless you. Your charity has been readily accepted and embraced by Allah. Muhammad bin Ash-Shafi'i said, Man nala minni aw aliqtu bi dhimmatihi abra'atuhu lillahi shakiran minnata. A'aramu awwiqa mu'minin yawm al-jaza. 
I have forgiven everyone. I don't want to appear before Allah on the day of Qiyamah and realize that the entry of someone into paradise is suspended because I have not forgiven him. So I have forgiven anyone and everyone. In English, the very profound quotation is, forgive the next person. He might not deserve the pardon, but you deserve the peace. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر رضي الله تعالى عنه وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه وأستقهم حياء عثمان رضي الله تعالى عنه وأقضاهم علي رضي الله تعالى عنه وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة رضي الله تعالى عنها والحسن والحسين سيدة شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله رضوان الله تعالى عليهم مجمعين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة